Down the Lens Podcast. Down the Lens Podcast. Down the Lens Podcast. Do something. Do do something new. Do something crazy. The reason the internet's taken over is because there's no there's less red tape over it. You, you have a bit more creative freedom. It, like we need young commissioners on TV. We need young writers on TV, not dinosaurs. We've been hustling since day one, <laughs> Cole. But I don't We've think that. Hustling. I bet you now you were allowed to do that. No, you just, I didn't you just hear. Done it. I grew up in the streets. I was a bad man. I was taking yeah. firewood and logs. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode twelve with. Me and a very special guest. I'm not going to announce him yet. He's currently playing with his mic, but this is a good friend of mine. I've known him for years. He's um, a voice actor, impressionist, a script writer, writer, all sorts. Mr. Schaefer Bates. Hello, mate. You, you missed out future BAFTA award. Well, an actor, Emmy. Writer, Emmy, Oscar nominee in 10 years' do me, time. Do you want me to go again? No, do no, it's to, fine. You've done a beautiful again. intro, mate. Well done. Unfortunately, you're not very happy with your um, running gun mic This there. is good. No, it's good now. This is fine. I've fixed it. Mic engineer Thanks. as well. Why well, you fancy yourself as a mic engineer? <laughs> I started off doing audio. Started off doing audio and video. So you I say you. about the audio, when did you start with all like the voice acting stuff? You know, down in my mum's basement. Every time I say this, I, I think people think I'm lying because you, know you know when people go off, uh, Oh, you, you make, you know, the old niche or the old sort of cliche. Oh, you go make playing games in your mum's basement or making videos in your mum's basement. I quite literally was making videos, videos in my mum's basement. basement. And the only person who can confirm that is my mum, who will, <laughs> will never speak on social media, or you. Yeah, that's true. It's true. <laughs> I started editing audio for my own videos downstairs in a split level bungalow, which was a garage that was turned into a bedroom. And uh, yeah, I used to do all my audio there and video and YouTube, YouTube video. So I just learned to edit audio. These days, though, you're not fast on the video, are you? You're trying to come away from it. Yeah, no. Well, no, I'm fast on what you mean, like video editing. Just all of it, really. Yeah, no, I, I, I do enjoy it. I enjoy it when you film it or I have a talented director I work with or I can write a script and give it to you and then you can go, right, this is the shot we're going to have. I like the breakdown of it. I think... After nine years of editing everything myself and doing audio myself and setting the camera up myself, which, you know, isn't too hard, but sometimes you want to be creative, but you want to leave that to other people. Do you know what I mean? You yeah, want to leave, like, like, you're really talented. I just, I've, I was saying to you earlier on, and I just, I, it's just so much easier when I have someone, I can do what I'm good at, which I think is, yeah. is the, is the, 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 the sort of creative side of the acting and, or the maybe the funny shit, although some people might disagree. <laughs> and um, and then you're really good with the camera, and then you know people like Andy's good at directing, and I like just putting us together, which still fries my head to this day because you're still you're still well, no, you're not brand new anymore. Are you actually? No, no, no. Yeah, you're very much, much a veteran now. I'm a veteran. Saying that it was a long yeah, it's been quite a while. Now, I'd say yeah. like three years because it all kicked. Well, I all I got into this, hence my career in videography through you about three years ago, really. When we took the reins, when we were doing like the COVID, yeah, home sketches that you'd write Gordon, out, and yeah, I'd come yeah. along and help out. Gordon Rams, and do you know what's funny about that? Is that's probably the most alive and viral my YouTube channel's been, and it hadn't been that viral ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and the only time I YouTube, not that I really upload to my YouTube channel anymore, because as I said, it's difficult to get all these you know talented videographers and directors in a room at once. But it's just funny that when the la like that most of the time, and I'll say this to the camera, that any of my videos go viral, it's because Cole shot it. <laughs> I think it's because we just bounce off each other well, because yeah. we've been best friends like since we released four. Yeah. Remember yeah, our yeah. first walk yeah. to comprehensive was together and just shit like that. Yeah. I went like kind of down another sports path and you went kind of more down the gaming, but we always stayed yeah. like best friends I regardless. Did, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was, I was so mad you saying that. Yeah, I did. I went down the gaming route because I wanted to be a, a, a video, a voice actor in a video game. Yeah. And I'm still gunning for that. But yeah, that's... But yeah, I was doing like the sports and the rugby and stuff. Yeah. But then I'd still come over and love watching you play video games like Battlefield <laughs> 2142. I'd just be sat there just waiting for like my turn. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. We'd play it on a PC that couldn't run it. Yeah, but I didn't even have a PC because I wasn't like... 
Oh, are you saying that like I'm I'm well off? I no, up. you just like that was your thing. So obviously, yeah, like if you yeah, need, yeah. if you want to spend your money on that, you could. Yeah, so mine. Yeah, I was like I guess buying so, yeah. new rugby boots or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. Well, I, no, I was sporty. I just didn't. I was. I like. I was in the middle ground when I. I'd like. Mm. I do sports, but it wouldn't be like competitively. I'd be like yeah. I'd enjoy doing it. I played football with you up until I was seventeen. Maybe? Yeah. For, Marty. Marty FC. Best well, not right, FC, best that's right rugby, back, it? Best right back and centre back, I think. And back we, in the day. We were. <laughs> when the town centre. That's all I was, is pass the ball to Schaefer and he'll just sprint in really his quick vintage Newcastle shirt yeah. with the, what's it, Newcastle ale on the front of it. <laughs> Do you remember that top? I just remember, I remember just them football matches that it just used to be me on the right, you in centre back. I think Hugh Llewellyn. Yeah, Gareth Powell as well on the left. Yeah, and then I just used to be really quick, and then you boys used to just be really big, just like power and stocky. And I remember having no football mind whatsoever back then. I just used to get the ball and just boot it up the pitch. Mm. <laughs> we bad. had a class team back in it. We did. We did have a class. But team. Yeah, you went from being in a in a basement and stuff, doing your little videos and all that, and then mm. obviously you got traction to you because yeah, you kind of started doing that when um, all the games of phones and all was going off wasn't it and See, then you yeah. li- not like you jumped on the bandwagon but obviously I remember mm. here we go if we rewind right, right back to obviously what you do now like the voice impressions and stuff like that you were like when we used to go on like when we were in school you always just do the typical like Irish Scottish and then yeah. all that malarkey yeah. and obviously you've just developed that yeah. in in your bedroom mm-hmm. masturbating yeah, yeah. in front of a all screen of yeah. but then obviously you develop that and then obviously Game of Thrones come around and the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that and it just kind of it's, Boom, yeah, it's mad. There. It's just, yeah, I, well, I was doing, I just remember, I don't even know at what point did I just go, God, I'm just going to do a load of impressions here and put it out on the internet. I don't know what it was. I I, I tried to tell myself it was when I first heard Andy Circus, who plays Gollum, talking yeah. about how he does the voice of Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Um, And then what happened is, uh, yeah, I think I just set up an eye toy. I was filming on a PlayStation 2 eye toy. Oh, yeah, they were yeah, classic. I yeah. plugged it into my PC in like 2014, I think it was, or 2013. And YouTube wasn't really big then. It wasn't that no. big. It was like 50 main famous people on YouTube as, as opposed to now. There's like everyone's famous on YouTube. There's millions. Um, yeah. And then started. That's a plug for me, actually. Try and get me to 100 subscribers, please. You deserve it, podcast. Just get called to 100 the subscribers. Podcast. Yeah. Down the lens, by the way. I Down promise the lens. you I'll get you to 100 subscribers if you just clip this. Down below. And then I'll, I'll invite me as a collaborator on Instagram. <laughs> Here we go. Tag your thumbnail. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, and then yeah, I just started doing impressions and voices and stuff, and and then and then Game of Thrones came around. It was Game of Thrones that really launched it for me. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I was doing like a hundred or hundred and fifty or two hundred impressions in like in like six minutes or whatever. And then uh, I don't even know who that is. Don't even know who, who are that you. Is. I don't know. Um, anyway, and. Um, yeah, and then it blew up there. It was Game of Thrones because I. So was I, it Jilly, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say. Fire. Yeah, it was crazy. And then I moved out, moved to a little flat in Cardiff, and I was like, I'll oh, put the postcode below if anyone wants to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, you know, it's just whatever. It's a little bit of fun, and it was. Um, that guy on like the one show and stuff, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like Jimmy Kimmel, and then I did straight after Jimmy. It was mad. It was, um, and I was twenty three. You know, I I did a bit of drama in school. Uh, and st- certainly studied acting and uh, I've always been like a, 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 just a massive cinephile, but it's just, oh, it was just mad. I was on Jimmy Kimmel and then I had an agent. I remember the first meeting I had with my agent. I was like, <laughs> do I have to pay you a, like yeah. a monthly wage? Cause I was like, I can't, I don't have money. And he was like, you know, we, we take a cut from what you do. And then we did Jimmy Kimmel and I was like, this is crazy. And then we did robot chicken, which is, um, like a stop motion cartoon is really famous in the US. It's run by Seth MacFarlane and Seth Green, who do Family Guy. Um, and we did that, and then we did the one show, and then we did Radio One. We did like guest appearances all the time, Radio One. Then we did a, our first TV show called Icon. And it just went from there until I decided I wanted to take a little bit of a step back. Because you obviously got on like the one show and stuff like that. And then where do you think, because you had that Channel 4 program as well when you yeah yeah Yeah. that was when you in the toilets and stuff and giving people massages yes (laughs) i still think if i did that show i still think that's the great one of the funniest shows i've done if i'd gone in with the mentality i do now and at the age i do now and the experience the experience i I was brand new on the massive like we were filming it in like 
houses that were three, four million pounds and pretending to be celebrities and the, on these big sets. And I was the only, it wasn't, I didn't get to bounce off another actor. It was just me. And it was brand new. Was, so talk me through that process. How does it go from obviously you being like the voice actor or like the star of it? How do they get in touch with you and how do they get you through to the process of actually filming it and releasing the, the series? They, it's like emailing, like they, they just, yeah, your just agent, emailed is it? me, just straight up emailed me through my Hotmail account. So okay. I don't know, to this day, I don't know where they get all the information from. They obviously have a curator working in the offices, but yeah, I mean, they they emailed me, but yeah, my agent reached out at the time. Ed Griffiths was like, hey, I'd like to represent you. Would you want to come to London for me? And I didn't yeah. know what that meant. Yeah, for, fine. And then from there, they just, yeah, reach out to my agent. Obviously your agent will go out and talk to, right, okay. like a good agent will have commissioners he knows, you know, their name and their blood type and their postcode and they're able to know what's going on all the time. A good agent will do that. If they're not doing that for you, then they're just someone who's just... So they get in touch with you and they pitch this idea to you and your agent or your agent Yeah, they would have pitched the idea to my agent and then my agent would have put it to me and said, do you want to do this? Obviously I was, I was like, yeah, but I remember being like, I'm going to be famous. Um, um, yeah, I remember being, I was like, I'm going to be really, really famous. And this was after Jimmy Kimmel, by the way. Yeah, like, Jimmy yeah. Kimmel's probably the, still the biggest thing I've done in 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 my life it's like jimmy kimmel it's huge yeah. um, top saturday night tv yeah, in, the US. in the us yeah it's massive but it, it, i was like this is gonna be huge because back then i thought you know british tv is just the best and lots of people were watching tv back then because social media wasn't a huge thing no no it wasn't yeah. was it that yeah. was that was when like the like a million views was like mental on youtube those we're talking like what, 14 15 years ago yeah when you first got into it and then no, about no, 10 exactly. years ago now for the the was, icon stuff. It was, I reckon, about, no, I reckon it was about nine years ago I got into YouTube, I think. I'm right. thinking that. 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 10 years then, nearly. Yeah. yeah about nine, 10 years. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was, it, it, everything was TV, but, and to be on TV was like, that was it. And you probably would have got a massive whack for being on TV, but. So now. I remember you said you had like Britain's Got Talent, like, um, <laughs> that's why I found it interesting to people who like watch Britain's Got Talent. You think that all the people that come onto the show are just like off the street, you know, just found talent. Yeah. From what I learned from you, they were like find them on like YouTube or now TikTok and stuff like that, yeah, yeah, inviting yeah. them onto the TV show uh -huh. to actually be part of it to then like try and push their career. Mm -hmm. Well, it's mad, isn't it? Because Britain's Got Talent, uh, it, probably six, seven years ago, I'd get people on pretty much off the street. Yeah. And, and they'd go on and they'd blow up. And some people on Britain's Got Talent, I think it's Axel Blake. Uh, was a comedian on Britain's Got Talent last year. I mean, he sold all his tours out, he's, he, but that's because he's he's hilarious. But I know him from the internet as well. I think what happens now is that they're well aware of people's fan bases on the internet. Yeah, and yeah. they're like, how do I translate that into into TV? And rightly so. It's, that's that's how it works. But it's just funny that you know, six, seven, eight years ago, TV commissioners would be like, oh, he's off the internet. Yeah, oh, yeah. but it's now no good they're, to us. they're dying to get. Now people they're like, there. oh, bring you know, we need you, and it's just like. Traditional media has to change itself up quickly. Mm -hmm. It has to stop being so afraid to do things. And there's too much red tape over everything. Yeah. Now I'm not saying going on TV and, and be a bigoted, racist, misogynistic piece of shit. Cause you know, you may as well just sit in your mum's basement. Um, but it's, um, <laughs> we'll but, start but, like, somewhere. do something, do, do something new, do something crazy. The reason the internet's taken over is cause there's no, there's less red tape over it. You, you have a bit more creative freedom. Get, like we need young commissioners on TV. We need young writers on TV, not dinosaurs who are like, hey, stuck in their old I've ways. got a really good idea and I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot because someone might sound like this in the TV industry. They I've got really a really good idea. Why don't we do another comedian comedy panel show? I can't wait for that to go out to 100,000, 100,000 65-year-olds tomorrow night. Like, like do something different. That's what we need. We need something different and exciting. And I, that's what I want to do. I want to get on. I want to, I want to turn, I want to see British. I want, I'd like to start doing some stuff on TV that just evolutionizes things. I'd love to do that. But I mean. Because, yeah, because what I notice from you a lot, even though, like, you obviously like doing the voice acting and stuff like that, where you get the most pleasure from is, um, your actual like script writing, your actual no, writing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But voice I think you're shit yeah. on that. Voice acting is still my number one, but there's a difference between, when I say voice acting, I think 
I don't know if you did, but uh, I'll, I'll just assume so, is when I say voice acting, it's, that voice acting for me is different. Voice acting is is going into a booth, getting given a brief on a character, and then a and reading a script, and it's acting. Impressions is just being someone else, which is also acting. It's a full, I mean, Gary Oldman, for fuck's sake, won an Oscar for doing an impression of Winston Churchill. Yeah. Um, that, I, I, look, I enjoy doing that, but I like to keep it separate. Like, it got to a point where I had to step away because it was just like... Impressions were everything were into everything. Like I couldn't walk into a room at twenty seven and go, I'd like to do write and they go, Yeah, but wouldn't you like to just do like it's an impressions show? And I'm like, I'd like to write a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to write a show that's about an impressionist? No, I wanna I wanna write a show, I wanna write a dark comedy, I wanna write a period drama. That's why I think mm. your true interest lies. Yeah, I'm a, I know obviously yeah. like you always said to me, like you'd love to like star in like a Pixar movie of just some sort. And- yeah. And then do obviously the voiceover for that. Yeah, yeah. I see like more your creative stuff come out. Like when we do like the Gordon Ramsay stuff and stuff like that, just some of the like, you know, the, the lines and stuff you use throughout yeah. the whole thing. It's just, yeah. every, every time there's a script, there's something new on there. You just come out with like a mad sentence. But it sounds so sick, like for the whole Yeah, the whole yeah. Video. I'd see, I'd, 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 it's funny when you say that because I I'd do the lines and go, how would my audience react to that? But never look at it myself and go, mm-hmm. That was well in shape. That was sick. Mine now is like, like writing a script and then giving it to you, and then you're looking at it and you know exactly how to do the shots. And you're like, yeah, like that's that's exciting for me now, knowing that I'm that that it's like a shared load now. Like my creativity is going to someone who's equally as creative as me, and we're gonna we're gonna push. The, look at this piece of content we put out. This is fun rather than picking up my phone and going, hello, it's me, Gordon Ramsay, now fuck off, or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, whereas now sure. it's like, I get to go away and write a script and then give it to you. Not, mm-hmm. I go away and write a script and you go, all right, so, um, like, what, like how do you, you're just like, okay, cool. I know what to do. That's that's where I'm finding fun. That's like all that, just the, the creative process. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> see like you, the writing side is definitely more the creative. What that's do you think great. the hardest struggles you've had in like, I wouldn't say you've there's any niche industry that you've been in because you've mm. been in, you've been in more social media, whether it be TV, maybe yeah, a bit yeah. of broadcast. But where do you think like the biggest struggles have come within your career? I honestly, in, like we're talking about for um, the podcast, it, there's no security in it, any of it. So you have to have you have to be doing. There's no good. I I don't believe you can call yourself, for example, a content creator nowadays if you're just doing one thing on one platform. Uh-huh. Like a content creator has to be doing three, four, five, six yeah. things in different platforms. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of how social media is and you have to adapt and survive. I don't think a con... So for example, some people stream. Yeah. Streamers are incredible content creators. But to go on a stream and just press the start button and go live and, and stream and go, I'm a content yeah, creator. Yeah. Like, what are you doing after that? Are you making shorts to put it out on your TikTok? Are you making long form content? Um, so for me, it's like, I think social media is the biggest struggle because you're a, you're a slave to the algorithm. You always are. And, and that, they compete with hundreds, if not millions of other people this, trying this, to do yeah. the same thing. There's more famous people now than non-famous people. And yeah. the thing is, it's like, it's like I'm a veteran now to the social media uh, business, I think, but also... It, you you never lose that. I can get a, like the Guy Ritchie stuff. It go it gets millions of views. So people love it. And then I'll put another video out that I've worked really hard on, and it'll get forty, fifty thousand views. And but and still to this yeah, day, that forty thousand one is the one that you cherish the most. Yeah, and yeah. The most time and you're most proud of. Yeah, yeah. But it just don't get you the numbers. Yeah, and still to this day, I'll look at that and go, oh fuck, I've fallen off. Like yeah, using yeah. words that the the Gen Z Gen Z. Oh, he's fallen off now. It's like. <laughs> he's not relevant. It's like, what defines relevancy anymore? Yeah. Like, what is relevancy? That's that's, that, that's my first question. But like, secondly, I think people, uh, you've got to take, even though social media is, I think, the hardest because you're a slave to the algorithm and I don't care how hard you work, like, it is tough to get consistent. And, and when I do see people consistently getting millions yeah. and millions of views, I'm like, wow, fair play. Like, fair play. Um, but, um, it, yeah, it's, it's, I'd say social media is a harder struggle. It is to this day. Cause it's just not, it's not secure either. Um, <laughs> we know this yeah, Facebook so. meta. Can I have my 70 grand now? Yeah. Please? Shafe is having issues with the old, uh, meta universe. Yeah, it's just crazy that a big tech company can wake up one day. And that's what I mean. Like it's not secure. Like you, you could tech company could wake up one day and go, I'm demonetizing you. 
and financially cancelling you. Do you or? find it quite stressful then living like day to day? Because obviously you don't know, not know when the next gig's coming through because you are self-employed and obviously it's quite a mm. diverse and like fighting yeah. kind of industry. I was talking to my friend Honus about this the other day because he's just quit his secure job as a manager to go and... Um, Be freelancing in an industry free, uh, he, of some Well, sort. he's going straight into music. Right, and he's 34, so it's a big, big thing to do at Yeah, 34. especially at that age, yeah. Uh, you know, your parent, you're not as reliant on your parents at that age or anything like that. And um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, it's, 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 it, but the struggle's fun. There's something fun. Like when it, when it is tough, don't get me wrong, it's miserable, you're stressed and Jesus Christ, you can't sleep. But if you've got a good work ethic and, and you know you're responsible for the next paycheck coming in, just work, like the hungrier you are, like the more you're going to go for it. you feel yourself more driven if like obviously yeah, you feel massively. Like, like massively like it's like you look at conor mcgregor like he's he, he, what's, what's the old saying nobody wants to go running in silk pajamas at 5 a.m he's like i think that's it and quote me on that and look at yeah. google and it's like conor mcgregor for example not comparing myself to the, the, the fucking champ champ you know what man but um you know when he was hungry and he was earning i don't know like five ten k a fight probably fighting twice so he might be earning 20k yeah, yeah. a year which you know is like a low salary now I'm assuming especially for you know people who live outside of a city um, and people who live in a city sorry and um, and, and then he started making money and millions and millions and millions yeah, started, and stopped, started sort of losing his fights and it makes you think I think when you start getting it you you, you get you bit, get a bit complacent I certainly have yeah. I know times where I've just had big payouts and I've been like I won't make just content fucking below no I remember during COVID you were getting paid <clears> a shit ton yeah. and just fucking just going on it end, was, yeah. endless things. Well, it's because like, I thought this is never ending. Yeah, I, I, it was a learning curve for sure. I thought it was never ending. I was, I was helping you start your v, business. VW camper, yeah, I didn't bought you? a VW camper van. I helped you start a business. I helped me start a business. I, I rented a studio. I was like, we're going to do podcasts all the time, and I was super content driven. And then I went, I saw, I saw the numbers coming down. I moved to London. Yeah, and I moved, moved to, to London. London you, what yeah. happened is the biggest mistake was moving to London. Well, no, not now. On it isn't, it isn't, isn't it? It's yeah, like, you it, don't know where you're going to draw the line. It's because I moved in the heart of COVID. Yeah. I'm an actor, creator, moving in the heart of COVID. There was nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So money was falling on Matter and YouTube. Like monetization was going down. I was paying 2,200 a month to live in an apartment. And, you know, I had like savings, like 40, 50K in the bank. And then you start, <clears throat> you start paying 2,200 a month so, and bills. Yeah. And, and, start, and, and leisure eating. activities. Yeah. And nothing like and nothing's coming in, no. you're like, you know, you get two years in or a year and a half into COVID, you're like, oh, that Fuck. 50K is 10K now. Yeah. And, and then, do you know, like I've only, work's only really started coming in the last year for me since COVID. It's been terrible. Everyone's still, yeah, it's been awful. But um, yeah, a bit of a rant there. But yeah, I, yeah, it's, 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 social media is the biggest struggle for sure. So you found social media the hardest. Yeah. Obviously, you had quite, I want to, you had a, a weird upbringing. No, you didn't. I don't know why I say you had a weird upbringing. <laughs> well, I did. He I, was a gypsy. I mean, no, he wasn't much. a gypsy. I, grew, I did grow up in a family of travellers though, didn't I? Wayne yeah, and Bobby. And... So that's your mum's side of family. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you had your dad's from Yorkshire. Was he Yorkshire? Yorkshire, yeah, yeah. He's a, I reckon yeah. you got a lot of your personality from your father. It was quite a, like a comedy kind of. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, he's a very loud gentleman, like yeah, quite yeah. boisterous. Yeah. Up for a laugh and all. Yeah. But obviously the, how do you think you developed from like when you were 16 kind of like behind a computer screen and not realizing what was out in the world for you to like where you where you are now obviously you've got a lot of aspirations yeah. now and like where, how far do you think you've come and like what do you think helped you along the way i think drugs helped me <laughs> yeah he's got all these rogue tattoos down the side of his arm oh, just he, to try and fit in and just, stuff like yeah that. just to fit in these are all once you move to london especially east london you get all these tattoos just to fit in um <laughs> No, I, I think I've definitely come a long way. Yeah, massively. I mean, I was tarmacking for my stepdad and his yeah. business. Shout out David and Border Surfing, by the way, because, well, taught me a lot, I guess. It taught me leadership. I know that. Yeah. It taught me how to somewhat look after myself. But um, So I remember you got me on a job before. And I think it was highly illegal, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> we had David's van, which is just like a transit flatbeds in the back. And we were going down one of the busiest motorways in Abergavenny, picking up logs that the, the tree surgeons are just <laughs> taking off the side of like the A470. 
And you were like, oh yeah, David wants us to go yeah. pick up some logs. So we were just <laughs> picking up logs in a transit. Yeah, firewood's money. Yeah. Yeah. We've been hustling since day one, Cole. <laughs> but I don't We've think that, hustling. I bet you now, you don't even know if I was, we were allowed to do that or not. You just, I didn't just done it. I grew up in the streets. I was a bad man. I was taking yeah. firewood and logs from the side of the, the, the nine miler. I loved it. Just hustling, mate. It's always making money. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Yeah, for sure. It's totally different. <sighs> like, yeah, growing up doing tarmac and then working in places like Aldi's and then pot washing and stuff like that compared yeah, to what I do now. Um, it's, it's definitely been hard, obviously. But aspirations-wise, yeah. I mean, I, I guess from the age of 17, 18... I was like, I want to be an actor. I want to be a voice actor. So I just think you found maybe not becoming that yet, at the, like at your age you are now. Oh, you'll be, I don't know. Do you find that, like I, I always, this is something I, a question I always want to know from other people. Like me not being in that position yet, some days I'll be sat, and I have ADHD, so I'll be, I'll be sat editing a video, a piece of social media content. Yeah. I'll be like, you know, when you're really dialed in, you're, you're cutting everything perfectly. Everything's ripple, delete, and lovely. Everything's, it's just perfect. You're like, this is a lovely edit. And then I just go, four minutes in, it's like a light goes off in my head, and I go, what am I doing? Hmm. And I'm like, it's like my, this paradox in my head. Like, what, what do you mean, what are you doing? Well, what am I doing? Why am I sat here editing social media content? I'm not getting paid for it. So you've been doing yeah. this for years. It's like a portfolio for you. Just add it. Use it again. Use it. Like it's a piece of content. Why am I doing this? I want to be an actor. I'll get up and just start like having the most incredible imposter syndrome about, well, I'm 32. Because I think you've just turned. I think you definitely reached points of low, like maybe in London or, or like a couple of years ago where you might have not hit where you wanted to be. Yeah. And you were like ready to like, Pick up shop and like move to uh, move to New York at one point. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you want to do that because yeah, yeah, you weren't yeah. like didn't think you were where you weren't you didn't think you were where you wanted to be at that particular point in time. Yeah, yeah. I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. I think I thought. I mean, it's good. I think it can be healthy sometimes to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, it gives you that drive into yeah. like what you want to do. Yeah, but I just thought I deserved or wanted to be in better places or I was constantly overlooked. Yeah, I was constantly going for meeting with commissioners and they were like, "Yeah, I agree with that." No, yeah. no, no, and then. I was like, what am I, what am I doing? And I think part of it, I wasn't working hard enough. Like I, I genuinely don't think I was. And we said that. But how do you think you could work harder, putting more content out there for people to see, or just, just like do, trying do, to plug away, speaking just, to just companies, do everything, like everything that you know that you're good at intrinsically. Like I love music. I love writing. And I discovered I love writing this year and I've already written a, 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 a pilot for a TV show. Well, hopefully give, he's what's the name of it? Up. It's called Napo. What's it's, that going to be about? It's, it's about a um, 23-year-old musician, rock musician, uh, and he's born into a really rich family. Like his dad's helped, his dad's famous. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be um, this really famous rock star, uh, like working class rock star. Yeah, yeah. Problem with that is he grew up in a really posh family and he has a posh accent, right, posh yeah. Tory parents, everything. Uh, but he wants to escape that and wants to be like, I've done it all on my own. I was a really shit relationship with his dad, like moves to Camden, but starts talking in like this Northern accent to be all like to the, the working class. Yeah, people. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. He is. He is, um, he is. And he's just, a, he's just a liar. He's just this, he just lies his way through everything to try and just be famous. And uh, he writes all his like ideas via chat AI. Mm -hmm lies about that goes on radio <laughs> one and they're like oh explain these lyrics to me yeah and he can't because no, it's all chat it means AI. nothing to him and it's just about how social media has essentially turned people who are actually quite genuine people regardless of their upbringing and turned them into like monsters they they, they want this fame and they'll do anything and how do you think you're going to try and get that in front of people so I've I, I I wrote a pitch deck with Andy Daly we you, you shoot our podcast um Love Thy Neighbour, who's a genius creative director, in my opinion. We started co-writing it, and I was like, right, all these people who've overlooked me, I'm going to just email them back. Oh, by the way, I've got this, uh, this, this, this pitch deck here. I've got this idea I really want to do. I only started writing it last November, and it's already, it's already seen, it's, getting a, it's catching a little bit of wind. So 
you know, I that's what you want. Are you going to star in it, or are you going to try? No, and, I don't want to star. You want to be no, like no, behind I, the I'm scenes. I'm 32 now, so there's no character I've getting really, old, in way. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no character I've really written that's mm-hmm. like all the characters are like in their twenties. Yeah, they're like social media kids. Still living your best life though, and you, yeah, too. I feel 21. If gender's a structure, age certainly is. Um, yeah, no, so. Yeah, going back to your point earlier on, I guess just do everything, do everything you can. It's only this year I went. Oh, I'm going to start writing. Well, November I've started like I've been doing music and just on the side, but if I, just do everything you can that you think you're good at, and then keep throwing it at the wall and like keep throwing it till it sticks to like shit to Velcro. Yeah, and something will happen. I think people have this like <clears throat> um, this this fear that once you get out your twenties, that's it. You're fucked. Yeah, you it's need like, to like no, nestle could, down. And... You can only get better if you keep doing it. Like I'm, at, I feel now at 31, 32 years of age, I'm taken way more seriously in my industry. But people actually go, oh well, we'll have a, we'll have him in the room and sit down with him and we'll discuss um, uh, the show he wants to do, or we'll discuss a pilot and ask him now, does he have any ideas? Yeah. Rather than we're doing this show, you're coming in, you're doing Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and it's great. I just think just. I say to everyone, just do everything you can. Do everything that you're good at and don't just put it out there because that's all we have anyway. Once yeah, everyone's dead, got access to social media these days. There's nothing stopping you from setting up an yeah. Instagram account, a TikTok account and putting whatever it might be, whether it might be voice acting, whether it might be content yeah, creation, yeah. travel, vlogger, anything. You just yeah. need to get out there some way or another. But a, a, a good thing to remember as well, and I think Ben, um, who you had on your podcast recently, he, he, he brought it up, was there's a difference between an Instagram business uh, and, and and there's like a complete disconnect between like yeah. looking at followers and going, Oh, they yeah, must yeah. be successful. It's the same with um, social media. Don't define yourself by your metrics. I know so many talented comedians, musicians and actors who have like two, 3000 followers or 500 followers. Yeah. And I know so many shit musicians. <laughs> I, I do. Like hundreds uh, of like, thousands uh, who of have followers. hundreds and thousands and millions of followers that are like their mates, like, that's the thing, whether you, whether you're them a, job in a the content creator or a voice actor or whatever, even if you have, might have 100,000 followers, technically, if you had 100, 100 followers alone, you had one person who worked for like Capital Records or bloody IMB yep. and stuff like yeah. that. That's the only takes out one person out yeah. of all them lot. Hello, Renly, to, um, to sign you up to get exactly. that deal. And, and even if you have 100 followers, that's 100 people in a room. That's yeah, I spoke people. about that on a previous yeah, episode. it is. When you get like twenty two thousand views on a on a TikTok, for example, CO two arena, yeah, boom, full. Yeah, like Crazy. one of your guy Richie ones got like was it four point one or something million? Four point one million, yeah. Yeah, so that that was a bad bad day. That was yeah, that yeah. that four point one million is larger than the population of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah. Do you know, imagine if the whole population of Wales, you know. Just watching you all at once, like when you just do they, your, wouldn't, they wouldn't get it. When you do your stuff up against the um up against the wall or just in yeah, your in your room or whatever. I know. I know. And I, like when you accumulate all those views together as well, it's like scary. When you start yeah. you, like all the stuff that's done five thousand views or two hundred views, <clears throat> millions of views. And just when you start accumulating them all together over the years and you start seeing like how many people have watched you, yeah, you're like looking at that the population of the earth has watched you at least once. Yeah. Or like, what well, I try to find interest. I've been going for this podcast for a little bit. It's the, like, when you look at the amount of hours spent watching yeah. something, like in yeah. total. So like, yeah. for example, for my podcast, off like a hundred views or 80 views, it's like 96 hours. It's just, it's like mental. Like it's technically there's 96 hours of, of, not someone's time, but spread across a number of different yeah, individuals. Yeah. Not being wasted because it's great content. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely amazing content. But it's being spent you know, watching that video, I find that I can't imagine what yours would be like. It's yours crazy. would be like a thousand years of time. Does that I, make sense? I, I, yeah, Can I, you don't, imagine? I don't even look at it because it scares me sometimes. But I, like, I try not to look at metrics at all, even though we're it's, uh, kind of hypocritical as we're discussing it now. But yeah, yeah, I just I like the I like the ones like well, you can see what audience you get from like what countries because yeah, obviously yeah, that interests yeah. me because obviously I've only just started this. Yeah. Like if I see like a new person watching from bloody Turkey or like yeah, Australia, yeah. I'm like, oh, banging. Like it's only one person, though, but I find it? it like, that's cool that it's gone to that side yeah, of the world. Yeah. It's interesting as well when you see like yeah. the gender and age. Yeah, yeah. Like the majority of my audience are, are women who are um, between the age of 25 and 35. I know, my like men, and, 28 and men to are like 36. 30% men. And I'm like, well, <clears throat> my content's quite, 
it's, it's very much sort of at the moment. I mean, it shifts and changes. Yeah, but, but then, because every now and then you're checking up like an app pitch or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't understand that to this day. I bet I, could, I, bet I could change that in, with, in, in one go. Yeah. By saying I have a girlfriend. <sighs> it's official. Absolutely, official. absolutely. You've <laughs> changed my life. To, what, what do you kind of, what are you planning for the next like year or so? Obviously you're going to get hopefully yeah. paid by Meta. Uh, that's yeah. The, that's the big well, thing. I'm, I'm planning to still be alive in the next year if Meta don't pay me, for Christ's sake. I don't, that's the biggest worry at the moment as we sit here in my apartment. I've only been in for two months. So I'll probably get kicked out of soon. Uh, thank you, Meta. Uh, Elon Musk, fight Mark Zuckerberg for my honor and my money, please. <laughs> Not that you're much better, but you know, fight the lizard man and get my money back. I yeah, act in, I gotta be, I want to be, I want to be either directing my own show or assistant directing my own show with Andy. Like I just love nothing more than to see a bunch of talented creatives in a show that I've written and they just run away with my baby yeah. and make it amazing. I want to do that. And then acting, I'm at that age. This is a good year, I think, to be taking acting seriously. But I've, I've been trying to take it seriously for years. But um, a lot of agents are like, oh, you're off the internet. And it's just like... Because, okay. yeah, you've just recently got yourself an agent now, hopefully. Into talent, into talent. Woo! Hannah Layton, I love you. I hopefully that will, that. like, start getting some sparks, yeah, going yeah. some fireworks somewhere. Yeah, it already is. She's just... Uh, it's, it's, I've had a, a lot of agents over the years. Well, I, I say a lot. That's kind of bad. It's making me sound like I'm a, a creative You're, a, creative you're an slack. agent slack, yeah. yeah. Um, there's reasons why I've left management and it's it's kind of the same as a relationship. Sometimes you, you just grow, outgrow each mm -hmm. other or you want to do different things. In my case, I've left previous agents because I've decided I didn't, I wanted to go back to Cardiff and just yeah, yeah. live a simple life. And then I've gone, actually, I don't want to. Um, but uh, but Hannah Layton from Inter Talent, who I've been with for all of two weeks, has been fantastic so far. She's if she comes to you with a job, what would be the best job that she could come to you with? Oh, mate. That's, what would be that's a dream? Great question. Um, right, so, well, right now? Or, yeah, let yeah. me set it up. So I'm Hannah, I'm Hannah Layton. Oh, hello, Schaefer. I've just uh, gone mm. off the phone to um, a big corporation on a number of different... Um, Outlet studios and um, potential uh, oh, you've work been on the for phone you. To everyone, Hannah. I know. Yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah, I've just done a week in uh, Hollywood, so I'm just trying oh, well to done. trying to get the business up and running for you. Um, yeah, yeah. A couple of clients have come to us. They're really excited to get you on board, but we're just asking, see what your uh, favourite or most desirable position or role would be within a certain uh, TV production or film. Well, Hannah, I, I assume that you've got something desirable to come to me in the first place. So, um, <laughs> right now, though, I feel I'd love to be, they're doing like lots of spin-offs of Game of Thrones, 100%. Right, okay. I think that would be, for me, off my bucket list. Like, I did so much around Game of Thrones. Comedy-based so kind of spin-offs? No, 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 no. No, Game of Thrones wouldn't do comedy. Oh, when you're saying spin-offs, not like, Piss they're, takes. They're, they're, I mean, like you mean, like based off the show. Because what's so like sequels, prequels? Yeah, there'll be stories about other okay. characters that perhaps we wanted mm. to continue on from. So there might be a Jon Snow um, sequel, like standalone like, kind yeah, of thing, where, he, where he's gone after Game of Thrones. Right, got you. And um, I'm like, just please get me. Like I was this close to being on Game of Thrones when I did Jimmy Kimmel, but the other guy, Steve Love, got to go on. And he had a five minute speaking part and it was, it was great. He had his head cut off by the hand, everything like that. But I feel like I did such, a, I did so much with that show mm -hmm. that everyone associated me with Game of Thrones. Yeah, hundred percent. At least give me like a yeah. little cameo role. But I'd love to have, I'd love to have, I'd love to be involved with HBO and the Game of Thrones universe in some way or another. Yeah. Like somewhere or another. And I kind of have been when I've done like uh, VO campaigns with Game of Thrones before, but like I'd love nothing more to be like, like just having an appearance with Kit Arrington who plays Jon Snow and he's walking past me on like a battlefield or something. And he stops and looks at me and he's like, as if to say like, cause at one point we, had, we looked like each other. Yeah, yeah. Cause I had like a dark, be a dark curly hair. It would be funny if I didn't say a word, he just kind of double takes me and they've written that into the script. As a you just love so, that. Oh, just, that'd be so fucking pre, fun. And that'd be pre. funny as well. Uh, cause I obviously, when Game of Thrones stopped, I left it. I, that's it. Oh, I do that. Same with Peaky Blinders. Did Peaky Blinders yeah. left that. Uh, House of the Dragons now off air until next year. Left that. And then Gordon Ramsay, we absolutely milked. Left that. Now There's Gordon still Ramsay's plenty back, to yeah. milk in that. Gordon Ramsay, I'm making a return with Gordon Ramsay because Kitchen Nightmare's coming. So yeah. get ready for that. Okay. Get ready for that, you petulant lizard. So you'd want to star in a kind of 
Games of Throne-y kind of thing. Yeah, though, really. I, right That's now. What I'm getting from there. But Pixar, Game of Thrones, or definitely, and it, you started the podcast talking about this, it'd be a video game role. Mm-hmm. I'd love to play a video game character. And I think the fan, I, like, I'm a video game fan, um, but I, I just think the fan base that comes with games as well is, like, I'd love to be in Skyrim, like a Bethesda game. Skyrim, the new Elder Scrolls, anything like that. Any Elder Scrolls game. So I don't keep for too long. What um, what kind of advice would you give someone, not starting off in a specific industry, but just kind of help them push to reach their goals and kind of aspire yeah. to get where they want to? I'd probably say be be prepared to not get paid for a long time. Mm. If, you, if you can do that, know who your support network are because they're going to have to help you if, if, if they will. I think also the big thing as well is you've got to be really Teflon. I don't think everyone's cut out to do social media or act in music or whatever, yeah. especially social media. You have to be really thick skinned because there's some horrible, horrible people online. Nasty bastards. Really horrible. Right in, the, in the comments and the DMs, kind of people. Yeah, I mean, I don't care when people message me going shit impressions. It's yeah, like, yeah. All right, well, you don't get a second chance at first impressions, but your first impression was shit. Yeah. You've boosted my algorithm by telling me I'm shit. So thank, thank you, you very yeah, much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think just know that it's going to be. This is going to be really shit. And um, also don't celebrate anything until it's signed yes, and sealed. Sir. Don't tell your friends. If you do an audition that's good, don't tell your friends. Yeah. Don't do anything. Assume it was shit. D- just don't tell anyone until everything's signed on the dotted line. And also when you feel like you are ready to give in and give up and just pack it in, just know that you, you will probably just one more step away from going, oh my God, you yeah, yeah. fucking hell. But then what's the most rewarding thing? What's the times where you think, fuck yeah, this is the whole reason why I've done this. I'm like, this is why I stay in this kind of game. I think for me is when people message me and talk about the ailments they have or mental health or, um, you know, I've had people who've, who've messaged me and their kids are sick and and you, I'm very, like, I've slagged off what I've done. I'm very self um a, a deprecate and I don't I, I always take the piss out myself yeah and there's sometimes when I'm feeling really low and I'm like let's go through my DMs and you'll see someone who's like yo I've had a really shit day I've had a breakup I've had this I've been let go of my job and I've watched you and uh, I, um, I feel amazing that makes me feel great because it's like that's why you find the most rewarding but I just think yeah I, I just look at that person and go you, you're so much better than me uh, like thank you for saying that like you've made me feel better um, you're such a better person than I am to be able to just be brave and come into my DMs and go, yo, I'm struggling right now and I watched your shit video and it made me laugh. I'm like, yeah. hey, play, thank you so much. Yeah, because sometimes you struggled in this industry, obviously both like like mentally dealing with like the pressure of it. And yeah, stuff. massively. So I bet yeah. that's good hearing that back that you've been able to obviously help that with someone else. Yes, it's lovely. I, I think it's amazing. I think these people are amazing. So it inspires me, if anything. But that's probably, yeah, the the... the the biggest trade-off is 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 that is making people happy or knowing that, like you know, someone from across the pond or someone right on your doorstep or like yeah, people yeah. come up to you in the street, like nice people come up to you in the street and go, "I love your work." Yeah, yeah. Like I love that. It's like, and wow, well, it's like it, it still takes me by surprise to this day. I'll be out and someone will go, Chafer Bates, I absolutely love your work," and you're like. You want a photo with them? I'm like, I want to yeah. run over to him. Go, can I have a photo with you? Do you remember that time we was out? Is it is a good story? We were, we were out for the Champions League final about God, eight years ago. I say sixteen. Yeah, was it? Well, no, it was about seven years ago then. Yeah, in Cardiff for me, and there's a bunch of even. Granted, we were in Wales, but there's a bunch of boys from Swansea, and we were all drinking in the brew house or wherever it was. Yeah, and they were come yeah. running over, and they, but then we're drinking those boys from Swansea. Oh, Schaefer, Schaefer, and all. And we were taking pictures of, like knives and forks and ketchup just yeah. randomly. Then a bloke from Mexico was there. Do you remember with oh, his yeah, missus? Yeah, and he yeah. bought shots of tequila. Yeah, he's he like, a big fan as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. He was, and, but like this bloke had come all the way from Mexico to watch the Champions League final. Real Madrid, think, Juventus. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, there's a bloke from Mexico and he like bumped into us, didn't he? Yeah. Obviously, he was obviously focused yeah, on you. Yeah. But yeah, he was, um, well, they were taking shots of tequila there because yeah, yeah. he recognised yeah. you off like YouTube. Well, the, the other watching. one was... Um, James Freshville, who was like a really, really good actor, and he was definitely coming into his own back then. He just played, he came on the night out with us. Didn't yeah, he, he did. Oh, so he I did remember Uncle, you introducing me did to Uncle him. Jack in Peaky Blinders. Um, some um, Batman he, stuff as well, Dark Knight stuff. I'm not sure if it was Dark Knight. It might. Be, I'm not sure. I have to pull up his IMDb. He's, he's great though. He's done. What's his name again? Uh, James Freshville. He's an Australian actor. He'd done a great film with Hugo Weaving as well. Um, and I don't want to misquote the title of it. 
Um, he did a film with Tom Hardy. He's, he's, he's fantastic. And uh, everyone come running up to me. He's like, can I have a photo? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just out with us. He was just hanging out with yeah, us. Yeah, he's just like a, he's like a normal bloke, isn't he? Yeah. I don't know how you knew him. But. Uh, well, congratulations to him. He's just been married. I think he's having a kid as well. So congratulations to him. Um, and uh, these people ran up to us. I was like, oh, mate, can I have a photo with you? Oh, do an impression to me. And I was like, oh, look. I yeah, don't... sometimes you're like, fuck yeah, off. Yeah. What have you always said to me? Like, oh, would you go up to a plumber when he's on a night out and yeah, say, I'll come fit, go, fit my yeah. ki- I'll kitchen do, or yeah, bathroom? Like, I don't mean I'll get nasty with you, but it's when people yeah. go, people go, oh, mate, do an impression. I go, oh, no, not today. And they go, oh, sorry, bud. I'm like, yeah, no worries, mate. And I'll probably do it then. It's when people are like, oh, but do a fucking impression, <laughs> innit? Oh, oh, come here. Always on the valley. Yeah, come here, <laughs> but Oh, do a fucking impression. Look at his face. Looks like his neck threw up. Um, and then, yeah, that'll piss me off. But these people were doing that. They're shouting at me, do an impression. And this girl went, oh, shit celebrity. And I'm like, first of all, thanks for calling me a celebrity. Secondly, shit celebrity. That's kind of, all right, that's, that's a win-win. Yeah, yeah. How'd you be a shit celebrity? And James, Rhett, I remember him going to a, how fucking dare you? Do you? You don't fucking talk to people like that. And she just went white and walked off. And I'm like, I'll never forget that. That guy's like a big actor, yeah, yeah. a Hollywood actor. And I'm like, and like the fact that he knows, and he all messaged me to this day asking me, do I want to get involved in projects? And, oh, that's stuff sick. Like that. and I'm like, God, man, like just shit like that. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. That was a sick night. Out. Yeah, it was a sick night. Out. Any last final words before I let you go? Be cool, be kind, don't be a dickhead, and always keep in touch with yourself. Love your stuff. And where can people follow you for those? I don't know, 70 people who will follow my channel and don't follow you. <laughs> get Cole to do one of his edits that. I trained him on everything, but I didn't. I didn't. didn't. At Schaefer Bates on every single platform. Thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks for having me, mate. It's been a long time coming. You are the individual that got me into it all, so I highly I appreciate trained it. it. Whatever he, he said, did, I trained uh, him every day. <laughs> every single camera, every single technique he learns of cinematography is all from me. Absolutely. Some of it. Not. Can I say 20%? You can have 20%. 20%. 20%. All right. Thank all right you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having Cheers, me. Cheers, bro. Right. Oh, that was sick. I enjoyed that. That was a good one.